Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. I know I'd mentioned last week that uh, I was going to do the 9k subs uh, giveaway this week. Unfortunately, work is uh, way too busy at the moment. I have a couple tanks I need to move, uh, a bunch of things I need to build, and I really couldn't take on another uh, build project right now. So I'm going to postpone that, my apologies, until uh, next week or at latest the week after once things uh, settle down. So what you're looking at here right now is the design I think I've settled on for airlift. It's uh, got three uh, gradually restricting chambers or tubes and I've beveled two of the three. I'll, I'll definitely get around to beveling the third as well later but as I said it was very busy. This is about 8 inches, and 2 inches of it is going to stick out of the water. Because I find uh, a 2 inch lift with this design uh, is actually quite good. It delivers a lot of flow. Oh, these are the platies, by the way. Uh, they're doing really quite well. Uh, I put this filter in, I remember, to uh, clean up the gunk that the uh, planter media underground filter just wasn't taken care of. And as you can see, it's doing a great job. This is the flow with an airstone, and I'm going to show you in a second the flow without an airstone. And up to this point, I'm just kind of just doing it anecdotally. Uh, I kind of always thought that this one flowed more. Not in the sense that it was del delivering a really even flow, but it seemed to be an awful lot more water coming out of it. So what I decided to do was to quantify this. It's not really necessary, I suppose. But I just wanted to, instead of just doing the hand waving thing, saying, hey, this one's bigger bubbles seem to move more water, I got both of them going here. This is the exact same tube. All I've done is just add an airstone to the end of it. And we're going to see which one is going to drain this tank from the top of the overflow down to the bottom. And they're doing, like, I've timed the, when I did the editing for the video, I timed them simultaneous, and we're going to see how long it takes for it to go. Now, instead of trying to get water from the surface of a tank up 12 inches or 10 inches all in one shot, I've decided to go in steps. So I'm going to raise it 2 inches, uh, have that drain into a chamber, have one of these into, in that chamber, and have it raise it another 2 inches, and so on and so forth. In theory, if this works, uh, besides getting bulky and having lots of airline tubings, uh, there doesn't seem to be really any kind of maximum lift you can get out of this. As long as you're happy with this flow rate, then you can make as many of these as you want, and it will lift the water up to wherever you want it to go. And then, uh, hopefully at that point, have it go through something useful, some form of filtration system, and uh, everything's perfect. So as you can see here, there isn't really any difference. I timed this all the way to the end, and there is a two second difference between the two. <laughs> two seconds. That's it. And it took a little over two minutes to drain this. Uh, the flow rate, I calculated out, it is 54 gallons per hour. It's not a lot, but 54 gallons of water an hour is way more than I need for uh, pretty much any kind of uh, build that I'm going to put an air filter on anyway. So this is all really useful uh, information and also useful flow rate. So that's kind of cool. I'm glad I actually did this. So there you go. One just finished just slightly before the other one. And now the only problem is I only have one of these. <laughs> I needed to make, for what I wanted, I needed four more. So I had to knock off four more of these. And yeah, that gets a little repetitive. So each of those pieces I replicated four more times. And then all I need to do is build the uh, holding system for it. So that, um, it, well, what I decided to do, this, this build actually is going to go on one of the tanks in uh, my fish room. Currently all I'm using it for is curing driftwood. Uh, but I'm going to convert it to a really large grow out tank for guppies. I'm having a lot of them coming up right now and I want to give them as much space as possible. So this is going to sit inside that. It's a 7 foot by 2 foot by usually about 8 inches of water in it and it's going to feed up into either a tray system for a trickle filter and or some form of planter filter 
and uh, it's, it's actually that's what I want it to run on. It's a big tank, and so it's going to be a good test for that. And these are the five lifts I went with. Each are uh, one, uh, one and a half inches each, so, so to center, and that gives me about two inches to the top. And so that's a two inch lift each, so from the top of the water to the final one, it's going to raise it up ten inches. And that should give me a, a really good test. Because one of the concerns I had about when I was running this, or thinking about running this, I should say, uh, is if there's a variability between the flow of any given uh, tube and chamber, uh, some could run dry or overflow, and that's why I'm testing this sitting in a tank. So this is going to be uh, the boxes. I originally thought I'd mill one for each of them, uh, but it turned out to be more <laughs> efficient and actually a lot easier to build a combo for each side. So each of the, each side is going to have one of these, and so one tube will fill in each one of them, one tube will uh, empty each one of them, and it'll become more clear in a few minutes. And then it's just going to stagger its way all the way to the top, and the final one will feed into the filter. So it should be interesting. I think it's going to be... Uh, if I can manage the flow rates. So initially I think what I'm going to do is not put an air stone on this, simply because, well first off, it doesn't seem to make a difference. <laughs> the flow rate is going to be fine. And I want to eliminate the variability between air stones. I could uh, buy some more expensive stones to do this, uh, but for this initial test I just want it to be running uh, no impedance whatsoever, just uh, air going through, and there shouldn't be any difficulty uh, keeping it all relatively the same. So all I'm going to do here now is, after uh, lots of measuring and tapping and uh, trying to line this up, because I want to get it uh, right the first time, I am going to glue this on. So this face here and is going to be on one side, and if you can imagine shifting this over one, flipping it uh, 180, and gluing it on the other side, that would be pretty much the entire build for this. I don't have the time, like I said, it's been a very busy week. I'm going to finish this up on Friday and show, you, uh, show the rest of it to you. But I'm going to run the first two lifts, and then I'm going to fiddle with that uh, between now and uh, Friday and make sure it's going to work properly, make some adjustments, that sort of thing. And then on Friday I'm going to show you the whole thing running. And it should be interesting. I think it's going to be the kind of thing that can easily uh, do what I want it to do and not be, uh, first off, really too cumbersome. Obviously if I want to do this for any other kind of uh, situation where, like for a client's tank or whatever, I'm going to have to come up with a hob style design for this. And I actually have some ideas for that already, but I want to test this for a while. I like to test these things for at least a couple years, but uh, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <coughs> I will keep running this thing as long as it's going to work, uh, but I will probably move on to trying other things in short order, uh, simply because, well, I mean, it, it needs to be done. I mean, uh, if I wanted to convert anything I have currently to air, I really do need to be able to lift it higher than a couple inches. I mean, that's just all there is to it. So there you go, it's all set up on its uh, vertical. I built the base off uh, camera, obviously. It just slides in there. Uh, it's just an, a bracket to hold it in the bottom. And these are the first two tubes. Uh, I've assembled them, and I'm going to stick them in. You can see the wood frame tank back there. It's cured long enough now, so I'm going to put some water in that. I'm going to put it to the height of the tank that this is going to actually end up sitting in. And then I'm going to run the first two chambers and see if I can get... Uh, get it to flow. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. If I can't get this part to work, uh, there's no point in even bothering to go to the next level. So here we go. Uh, the tank's uh, got water in it. The first one's uh, bubbling. I haven't turned the second one on yet. Now uh, you can see it overflowing. Uh, that's another thing I want to work on for this. I have to come up with a system for feedback, all that sort of stuff, but for the moment I just want to run this. And here you go. That is four inches of height, and it is percolating and uh, flowing at the same flow rate as if we're just two inches out of the water. If the next three work the same way as this, I think this is going to be kind of cool. So anyway, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And on Friday, I'll get this all running and showing you exactly how it's going to all look. Hopefully, I have 
uh, running five chambers and ten inches out of the water. Uh, that would be kind of interesting. So anyway, thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.